scheduled in March. Boy, we don't know when they can take a write on a red. Um, they don't have the four-way stops. Yeah, it's awful. Oh, I say to you guys all the great stuff and then stay in the Oh, no, I see so many people that are not blaming the support. I'm just thrilled. It's been going on before this. It is not. It is just... Okay, so here's my take, because we have so much metal. We get the metal. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's why they don't have to clean as bad. Yeah, because they don't know how to drive. Well, they don't need to use their signals, because they just really get into the roundabout. So poor people, I feel so bad that they don't know what to do. Anyway, just one is going to get to get to Oh, um, well, it, it should be. Um, it's three minutes to. No, I know, but the cup on the screen when it goes online. Why wouldn't it be starting at three minutes to ten? Shouldn't it already be going? Um, oh, he needs to know when it's one minute. He's going to start playing. You think it'll go in at like one minute just to let him know? it starts. <laughs>
Welcome to worship this day. Um, this week is uh, physics week. Oh, before I get into that, uh, just a reminder that uh, for those of you who are tuning in online, uh, it is communion today, so you might want to grab uh, your elements uh, for communion. And if you wanted a bulletin to follow along with music and, and what's going on in the service, you can find that at www.lwlcmn.org, and that stands for Living Waters Lutheran Church, Minnesota. Uh, and you can find that there. Uh, anyway, like I said, it is physics week this week, and if you haven't, check out the experiments that uh, came in your packet uh, for Lent. Uh, there are several of them. One of them is creating a water NATO, which sounds really cool. I haven't done it, but I've actually seen it done before. Uh, creating a prism, a rainbow prism with water, and... Um, also, you have stuff in there to make an origami heart. So uh, that is in there as well. And you can actually, I think there might be stuff to make a couple of them. And now you know how to do it. And so you can use all sorts of uh, things that you have at your disposal at home as well. Uh, just a reminder that you can have check-in reminders um, to go online and you can sign up to get a devotion sent to you. It'll direct you to a Bible verse and a question for you to ponder for throughout your day. And you'll receive a text about that um, as a way to um, kick off your day and, and get started with God. Um, Wednesday night, we will have our midweek Lenten service and they are online and you can view them earlier in the day by uh, 1 p.m. Um, you can tune in following that um, for a backstage pass. So the person that's been speaking th for that service, you can check in at 7.15 and have conversation with that person. Uh, it's really ni nice to be able to uh, get a little bit of time to, to visit about their topic and their journey. Um, also, uh, The Chosen uh, is going on, and episode eight will be uh, the topic of discussion. So if you haven't tuned in, to that, um, I would like to invite you to do that as well. I've had the opportunity to, to do one of those, and um, it was a great discussion um, about that particular episode and what that means for us today. Um, I would also like to invite Lori up now to share a little bit more about uh, things that are going on with our youth program. And welcome. I'm Lori Dingman. Um, I'm in charge of the K through sixth grade. So, um, what we're going to have this week is Wednesday is our fire and ice, and we don't have ice anymore. But we're going to keep pushing through, which is great. But we're going to still have the fire. It's a rotational thing that the kids get to go through. And this time we're going to be playing uh, capture the flag and tug of war. How much fun is that going to be? And then Todd's going to do drama by the fire. We're going to make it green because it's St. Patrick's Day. So we're doing, going with that theme. And then uh, we're having a lesson. And, and instead of sipping cocoa, we're going to do uh, green Kool-Aid. So it's amazingly fun. I have to share a really quick story. A parent was telling me outside that um, their daughter doesn't typically kind of uh, is an introvert. And um, she was sharing with me that when she comes to this event, she left last time saying, I just feel like I can be myself. I feel like I can interact and I can be me. And it's just probably a different experience for the kids to be outside and to be rotating. And um, so don't be afraid to bring your kids, you know, keep them connected to the church, keep them connected to their peers. And, um, and then we gotta get ready for what's coming because we're all gonna be immersed into our communities again soon. Um, and then we've got Sunday, uh, K through third grade is gonna be at the municipal park again. And the theme is grow in God. So we're gonna be doing some gardening and um, just getting creative with our spiritual growth and, and things like that. And then we have a little plug for our Spring Into Action, which is our mission or our outreach for March and April. And April 11th, we're going to be uh, assembling care bags for uh, help, help, <laughs> homeless helping homeless. And uh, so you'll see out here we have some totes, and we're just asking for donations. Uh, you'll see on there what we need, and we really appreciate your generosity so far. It's been amazing, so we really appreciate it. So have an awesome day. Enjoy the sunshine, and let's spring into action. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Lori. <clears throat> Uh, there will be a, a First Communion class this coming up Saturday at 9 a.m. So uh, any students who might be interested, there's not an age limit. Uh, if you're interested or your student is interested, please check it out, uh, 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. And uh, make sure to get signed up so that we can make sure that we have enough chalices. And then um, 
even if you want a refresher for yourself and, and think about and talk about what communion means, uh, you are invited to come as well. And if you have a student um, coming, we do encourage a parent to attend with them. Uh, if both parents can attend, that's even better. Um, our Good Friday food drive is going to be from 9 a.m. until noon. Um, so feel free to bring stuff in. And uh, as you can see, there's things that are coming in already. And um, you can save it up and bring it in then, or just keep bringing it in like you normally do, whatever works. Um, I want to extend a special word of welcome to Pastor Stephen Cook, who is from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod, who is here for my installation. And so we're uh, appreciative of the fact that he is here to join us with worship this morning. And we have uh, one final announcement from Todd, unless there's any others. I just want to uh, have you all know that yesterday was a very big and special day for, for Anne and her, her life, her ministry. Uh, can we go back to that picture there, uh, Teresa? There we go. So Anne was ordained yesterday down at Bethlehem Lutheran Church. Uh, there's uh, Bishop John Anderson and Anne, and uh, it was... Yours just, truly. Well, yeah. <laughs> I was hoping we could crop that part out. But, but anyway, it was a great day, and she had... Uh, we, we may have some people here who are part of the Anne fan club, but we had people first service all the way from her intern ship church in billings montana but uh it was a very special day and we are excited that ann is a part of our family now uh, serving us now as an ordained pastor of the evangelical lutheran church in america let's give her a huge congratulations <laughs> all right and if those are the announcements i think i'm just going to continue with our baptism that we've got this morning. Uh, and so everyone wants to turn to the little baptismal folder and uh, I'll meet the baptismal party back by the font. Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, today we celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism. And in this water, we believe that God forgives us, saves us from sin and death, raises us to new life. God welcomes us into the family of God, makes us one in the body of Christ. God empowers us with the gift of the Holy Spirit, and we are sent out to be the light of Christ in the world. So first of all, parents, you are presenting Cecilia Joy Gordon for baptism. Today, God makes some big promise to, promises to Cecilia, but you are also asked to make some big promises to God, to bring her to worship, teach her the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, the Ten Commandments, read the Bible with her, provide her with opportunities to experience God's love, join in God's work out in the world, and care for others and the world God loves, and join Christ's work for justice and peace. So do you parents promise to raise Cecilia as a baptized child of God? Yes, we promise. And sponsors, do you promise to nurture Cecilia in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help her live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? Yes, we promise. And people of God, do you promise to support Cecilia and her family as they grow in their faith? Yes, we promise. Parents and sponsors, I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, to reject sin and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin and death that draw us away from God? If so, please say, I renounce them. I renounce them. And do you believe in God the Father? And would everyone please join in? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, 
and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And uh, so I've got a little helper here. Where's Evelyn? You're going to help me pour some water in. And then we also have kind of some special water we're going to pour in too. But first we'll have you help me. You want to help kind of, you help me grab on. Grab on. We're going to warm that water up for your little sister. Yeah. Oh, good job. And then we've got, I understand, a little water from the Jordan River, right? My goodness, this is uh, going to make it even a little, a little more special. All right, very good, and uh, let's pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that, that uh, Cecilia, washed in the waters of baptism, may be given new life. To you, we give our honor and praise. Amen. All right. I just love the little fuzzy hair. She looks like a new chick. All right, there we go. Now I'm going to get that little fuzzy hair wet. Cecilia Joy, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Cecilia, child of God, you've been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And now, big sister, you want to help kind of wipe, wipe her down, get that little chick fuzz standing up again. <laughs> yeah, good job. You're really good. Let's pray, um, pray together. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Cecilia Joy with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. And we typically light a candle on this day because you know, it's kind of like a birthday candle, and this is uh, a second birthday that Cecilia will celebrate. And I was sharing with her parents that every March 14th, they should take out this candle and light it um, and remind her, tell her the story of her baptism. But uh, go ahead. Bless your lights and shine before others that they may see your good work and glorify your God in heaven. All right, tonight, I'll give that to one of you. There you go. Let us pray. O oh God, the giver of all life, look with kindness upon Brittany and Keith. And let them ever rejoice in the gift you have given them. Strengthen them in their own baptism so that they may share eternally the salvation you have given them through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And we're going to, well, we could welcome you, Brittany, but we're going <laughs> to, we're going to for sure welcome Cecilia, all right, as our, our newest little member of our, our family. So we welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. And let's, let's all give our, our welcome applause. There we go. <laughs> yeah. We, we can't do the parade, but we can do the Lion King. So, <laughs> awesome. Well, congratulations, all of you. And uh, you can return to your seats. And we're going to continue now with, um, I believe, our opening song. <laughs>
Good morning. Good morning. Am I on? One, two, three. Okay. I'm Pastor Steve Cook. I serve on your behalf as one of your synod ministers, one of the assistants to our Bishop John Anderson, and it's such a thrill to be here today uh, to install your new associate pastor, Ann Bjorklund. I've known Ann now for a couple of years uh, in a variety of ways, uh, and it's so happy that we've gotten to the state. Uh, greetings from the 242 congregations of the Southwestern Minnesota Synod, especially our newest congregation, Reborn Lao Lutheran Church in Wake Park, which at about 10 minutes, I'm hoping to get there, uh, we'll be having a baptismal festival, 12 adult baptisms. Their, their, their ministry is to serve the, La the growing Laotian community in this, in this area and their families, because many of them are, are connected or married to non-Laotian people. Um, greetings from the roughly 10,000 congregations of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America and our presiding Bishop Elizabeth Eaton and from the 99 um, national Lutheran bodies that make up the Lutheran World Federation. So here's a fun fact. On any given week, there are more Lutherans in Lutheran worship in Ethiopia than there are in all of North America and Europe combined. Which makes, raises an interesting question, doesn't it? What is Lutheran worship? What does a Lutheran look like? What does Lutheran music sound like? We are part of a network, a web of faithfulness to Jesus, trusting in the promise of salvation through the cross and God's grace alone. Having been authorized by the church to install Anne Bjorklund, our co-worker in the gospel as associate pastor, I now ask for certification of this call. After prayerful deliberation, we of Living Waters Lutheran Church have called Ann Bjorklund to serve as a minister of word and sacrament in the position of associate pastor. And a reading from John's Gospel. Jesus said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And in Matthew Gospel, we read that Jesus said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. And St. Paul writes in his first letter to Timothy, set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Attend to the public reading of scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice, devote yourself to them so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and your hearers. And in the presence of this assembly, we will commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility in the confidence that it comes from God for the call of the church. I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you preach and teach in accordance with the Holy Scriptures and with the confessions of the Lutheran Church? Will you carry out this ministry in harmony with the constitutions of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be diligent in your study of Holy Scriptures and faithful in your use of the means of grace? I will, and I ask God to help me. Trusting in God's care, will you love, serve, and pray for God's people, nourish them with the word and sacraments, and lead them by your own example in faithful service and holy living? I will, and I ask God to help me. Will you be, give faithful witness in the world that God's love may be known in all that you do? I will, and I ask God to help me. May God, who has given you the will to do these things, graciously give you the strength, 
and compassion to, to perform them. And let the church say amen. Amen. I invite the assembly now to stand. People of God, will you receive Anne as a messenger of Jesus Christ, sent to serve all people with the gospel of hope and salvation? Will you regard Anne as a servant of Christ and a steward of the mystery of God? If so, please respond, we will, and we ask God to help us. We will, and we ask God to help us. Will you pray for Anne? Will you help and honor Anne in carrying out this ministry? In all things, will you strive to live together in the peace and unity of Christ? We, we will, will, and we, we ask God, God to help us. And the office of associate pastor is commended to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You have been called to be among us, to baptize, to teach, and to forgive sins. You have been called to be among us, to proclaim the good news. You have been called to be among us to preside at the Lord's Supper. People of God, I present to you Pastor Anne, your new pastor. Let us welcome her in the name of Christ. We now enter into a time of confession and forgiveness. God has extended mercy and grace to us that's beyond our understanding. As we consider God's immense love for us, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Let us pray. Gracious God, there are times when we think we're better than others. We turn a blind eye to those in need, those in pain, those we don't understand or don't want to take the time to understand. We become self-absorbed in our own lives, our own stuff, thinking only of what benefits us and not all of your beloved children and your creation. We don't like to admit our mistakes, our shortcomings, our faults, or the things we've done intentionally that harm others. And when it's hard to look at those things, we bury our head in the sand, not wanting to look at the truth of our failings. Open our eyes and our hearts to your forgiveness, your grace, and your leading as we seek to love others as you love us. Please spend some time in silent reflection and confession. God's love, grace, and forgiveness extend beyond what we can imagine and comprehend. So hear this good news. You are forgiven and loved. God's mercy and grace is with you. In baptism, we were made children of God, and so I invite you to make a sign of the cross on your forehead as you remember that you are forever one of God's beloved.
But Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance that the Lord will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you and you have only to keep still. And then the Lord said to Moses, why do you cry out to me? Tell the Israelites to go forward. But you lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and, and divide it and the Israelites may go into the sea on dry ground. And then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and his army and his chariots and his chariot drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh, his chariots and his chariot drivers. The angel of the Lord who was going with them before the Israelite army moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from front of them and took the place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was with them and the darkness and it lit up the night. No one did not come near the other all night. Well, then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided and the Israelites went into the sea on dry ground and the waters forming a wall for them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them, all of Pharaoh's horses, chariots and chariot drivers. At the moment, at the morning, when the Lord took in, looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. And then he clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. And the Egyptians said, let us flee from the Israelites for the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. And then the Lord said to Moses, stretch out your hand over the sea so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians and upon the chariots and the chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea and at dawn the sea returned to its normal depth. And as the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea and the water returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers and the entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the Israelites walked on dry ground through the sea and the waters formed a wall on, for them on their right and on their left. Then the Lord saved Israel from the day of the Egyptians and Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that had been done that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and they believed in the, front, in the Lord and in his servant Moses. Word of God, word of life. Matthew 14, verses 22 through 33. Jesus walks on the water. Immediately he made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It's a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately, Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened, and beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me! Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? 
When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. said to him, Now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Scared to touch that. Welcome to Physics Week. It's that time when we have all the answers of the hows of things why, and why they happen the way they do. If you've attempted or even looked at the experiments that were shared in your Lenten packet, you know that things tend to work in certain ways because of natural laws, laws of physics. This time during Lent has been exploring some of the natural laws that we've been surrounded by and also talking about God and the ways that God works in and around us and in our world. The scriptures for today remind us that even though there are natural laws in place, God has the power to move beyond them. Imagine yourself in the position of the Israelites you're being pursued by people that want to imprison you. If they capture you, you'll probably be beaten, possibly killed, but most certainly returned to a life of slavery. You've just gotten free of slavery and you're following Moses on a journey that you know nothing about. You're wondering if it's too good to be true and can we really trust this guy Moses? You know, we did just come out of slavery. We do kind of know what's going on with that, what's expected of us. And now you get to the Red Sea. And the Egyptians are getting closer. Come on, people, hurry up. They're after us. Drop that bag. You don't need it. Let's go. Let's go. You're taking too long. We're going to get killed. We're going to get beaten if we... Let them catch up to us. Your heart sinks as the Red Sea is before you. You're certainly going to die. If it's not at the hands of the Egyptians, the soldiers, it will certainly be from drowning. And God gives Moses the power to part the Red Sea. How can this happen? It's not possible, and yet here we are, walking and even running where there once was water. Imagine you're at a wedding. You're the bride or the groom. You've maxed out your budget, and the wine is gone. Your guests are enjoying themselves celebrating with you, and you're beginning to panic. 
You don't want to tell anyone. You don't want to spoil the celebration to rain on your own parade, to dampen anyone's spirits, including your own. But you're trying to be cordial, to greet your guests, to thank them for coming, and to spend time with them without showing your anxiety. But you know it's there. Your palms are sweaty. You're getting hot. And you can tell that your blood pressure is rising. And suddenly, someone compliments you on your selection of wine. Well, you thank them and acknowledge your purchase. And then they go on to explain how much better the wine is that they just had versus what they had had just moments earlier. And another person does the same thing. You've given them the best, but you didn't realize it because it wasn't you. You question the wait staff and discover that there was this man, Jesus, who somehow provided more wine to be served to your guests. And imagine, you're Peter on a boat, headed to your next destination. You're tired from the day's activities. Jesus had been preaching and teaching and healing people and you and the other disciples helped serve thousands of people earlier that day. You're energized and excited, but you're also exhausted because that's what can and does happen to some of us even when we've witnessed or been a part of amazing activities and events. You look out on the water and you see a figure what? what? It, it can't be. You're just tired. It's not possible. There can't really be someone walking on the water. Um, Jesus, is that you? And Jesus calls you onto the water to join him. And now you too are walking on the water with Jesus at your side. What about the laws of nature, of gravity, of physics, of logic? Maybe we don't always get the names correct for all these different laws and, and uh, re relativity and gravity and all these other different things, but we know that they're not normal events. And what about us? What about the rules and the laws that we like to make up? The rules about who should and should not participate in certain things. The rules about who should be included or who should be excluded. If your skin is a certain color, you must be a danger or a threat to society. And you certainly shouldn't be allowed to vote. If you're a female, you can't be a judge or a CEO or a firefighter or a soldier, a pastor, and you certainly shouldn't be working outside the home. You should be raising children and keeping up the house and cooking and baking and ironing. And I did lots of ironing yesterday as I was getting my all ready for ordination. And if you're over 65, you should be retired and you're no longer, no longer useful to society. You're too old to offer anything to anyone and you should step aside and let the younger generation take over. And if you're differently abled, you aren't capable of being a protective member of society. And if you don't fit into our heteronormative society, you're less than. And if you don't belong to a certain political party, then you belong to the radical right 
or you belong to the radical left. We like putting people into boxes, places that allow us to find ways around the command that Jesus gives us to love one another. But what happens when we allow the power of God and the law of love to take over? What happens when we allow ourselves to see others as God sees us? What happens when we find reasons to love rather than put someone else in a box? It's not easy to love people, to be in a relationship. It takes work. Just ask my wife. We find ways to turn a blind eye to others. We choose ignorance over kindness and compassion and loving as God asks us to. But what happens when we choose to love instead of hate or despise or dislike or even just ignore someone? What joy can we have in getting to know and love others and embrace learning new things and see and embrace the various and different gifts that God gives each of us? I think about the amazing gifts and talents of our musical team here. One person alone has gifts and talents, but when you join them all together, we have an even greater enriched experience. In case you didn't realize it, I used several water images today. I purposely chose them because of the ways that God uses water, an ordinary thing for us, to work in extraordinary ways. Today, we had Cecilia's baptism God used ordinary water to welcome each one of us into God's family, to cleanse us from sin, and to bring us into relationship with God. We too are given the opportunity and the ability to love as God loves. Have you ever heard a word from someone that picks you up, lifts your spirits, just helps you to move forward? That's what love does. That's what God does. And that's what God wants for us to help further the kingdom of God. How many of you have ever thrown a rock into a calm body of water? Maybe a puddle, a lake, a slow-moving stream? Did you notice the ripples that were formed? The rock hitting has this ripple effect and they seem to go on forever sometimes. But what if there's something in the water when a ripple comes up next to it? More ripples are formed going in different directions. That's what our lives are like in Christ. When we allow God's love to grow, we can share it with others. And those ripples can touch one life two lives, four lives, eight lives, 16, 32, and we can go on and on. And think, if there are 50 people here right now, and we each touch one person's life with love, and each one of those people does the same, when we move out 11 ripples from ourselves, we have affected over 100,000 people. That's as big as our St. Cloud metro area. And what about if we love other people and we show that in our other communities that we're a part of? Maybe our relatives, friends in different areas. What does that look like? Isn't that a miracle? laws of nature at work and God's love at work. 
go, make ripples in the world. Amen.
Let us pray. Good and gracious God, you are love, and you love us no matter what we do or say. At times, we struggle to share your love with others. Help us and embolden us to extend your love to all and to all that you have created. From east to west, your steadfast love is shown, and we see it in, in nature. Please bring restoration to areas that have experienced tornadoes and blizzards. We ask that you watch over those who are in quarantine after travel, and that they stay COVID-free, and that they can be among people again. Your mercy endures forever, and we pray that you deliver all who cry to you, especially those who are hungry and without homes, for those who are sick, and, and we ask that you bring comfort to those who mourn. Today we remember Jan, Vicki, Chris, Joyce, Maureen, Rich, and Camille. Be with them as they need your healing touch. And we pray for those who are in hospice care, that we pray that you bring them peace and you make God's love and grace known. Be with their families and all of their caretakers. And today we especially remember Mike. And we pray for all those who mourn. We pray for the friends and family of Mike Tesh and the family of Leland Lee's sister. Wipe away their tears and bring them peace. We give thanks with us for two new co-workers with us, one um, Anne, and with her ministry that she will bring. Be with her so that she remains faithful to your call. And we also give thanks for our newest sister in Christ, Cecilia. Be with mom and dad and sister Evelyn as they help and nurture her faith in you. May our hearts know your truth that open our eyes to see, to see the law that you bring about and the law of love that shows us joy. May we always open our arms and welcome all, especially those who we view as different. For in, in you we are all the same, beloved children of God. We pray all of these things spoken and unspoken, knowing that you hear them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. Well, our God, who defies expectations, has invited us to this meal where we have before us what looks like bread, but is so much more, and what looks like wine, but is so much more, where we encounter Jesus' very presence in this meal. And so we remember on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he, he gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 
I would invite you to take your piece of bread. Hear these words spoken for you, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ keep you and strengthen you into eternal life. Be now at peace. Amen. We're going to close our service by singing Spirit of Gentleness, and we're going to sing the first and the last verse. Receive the benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. May God you go in favor and peace. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.